You are. Thank you, Brother Superintendent. You are. When you holding something against your brother in Christ Jesus, you are the one that's miserable. Amen. It messes you up. Because like I was saying, you find out you you you, you find this, you might not know it, but you dislike him. And you fall into the work of the you find yourself hating him. Got strife against him. Wrath against him. So you got to get this stuff out of you because it's a bad spirit. And no one wants to walk around with a bad spirit. Now, we haven't been taught this because the way of the world, when somebody do something like you, nobody have to tell you to get angry. Nobody have to tell you to get mad. Nobody have to teach you to hate them. That's, come, that's the way of the world. You don't have to be taught that. That's just the way of the world. You're born with that. But if you're going to do it Jesus' way, you have to be taught how to do that. And then you have to go out and execute what he's teaching you. So you cannot have no hatred against your brother in, in Christ. You got to get that stuff out of you, and that way you have a clean heart, and you can do the work of the Lord. So this is what he's telling them about. Forgive your brother. And then when he got into that verse 22, when he told him the number that seven times 70 comes out to be 490 times. Is Jesus saying if you forgive him 490 times, then that's enough? No, that's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus, in other words, he was saying there's no limit. Because how many, who's going to give, forgive somebody 490 times? Nobody's going to actually do that. But what Jesus is telling him there is no limit on forgiveness. Yeah. Now, well, why is it so important to give? Thank you, somebody, for asking the question. Why is it so important to forgive? Because Jesus gave a model prayer. Somebody find Matthew 6 and 12. This is why we have to forgive when somebody does something against us. We have to forgive them because of Matthew 6 and 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's the model prayer that Jesus told us to pray. Matthew 6 and 12. Forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debt code. So even if your brother did something against you and you find out that you can't forgive him, but every time you do something wrong, do y'all see what's going to happen? God won't forgive you. So this is why it's so important to forgive somebody. Get that stuff out of your heart. Because that's the model prayer. Forgive us of our debt as we forgive our debt talk. That's biblical teaching. Now you can either do it the way of the world or you can do it by Jesus' teaching. And Jesus is teaching us if something comes between one of you and my brother, we got to forgive them. And that 490 times, but it's based on Matthew 6 and 12. Now, also, this is a, a parable that Jesus is going to be teaching here about forgiveness. And, and the main thing that he's saying, which also involved that Matthew uh, 6 and 12, is your debts are forgiven, right? But how is it that your debts are forgiven? It costs something for your debt. For God to forgive you of your debt, your, your, your wrongdoing, it costs something. Because we know that everything you do wrong, you got to give an account for that wrongdoing. But so how can it be paid for? Thank you for asking. With the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And if Jesus went and paid that price, if he died for us to have that right, we, be, we are being real selfish, but we can't forgive one another. And most times, this ain't nothing but little dick picking stuff. I think Reverend Taylor was preaching Sunday. And we all big time Christian and everything like that, but let, let's go out there and somebody, um, uh, 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 what do you call it? When you put that score on your car? It's a yeah. name you call it. Yeah, I'm going to Key your car. Right. Key, that's it. Key your car. Yeah. And if you find out who keyed it, the Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah. You know. And it could be one of your brothers. Yeah. He shouldn't do it. But if he keyed, how you gonna act? Yeah. 
according to him, we got to go to him and try to straighten this stuff out. And you got to try to, you got to forgive him. But that's not the way of the world. That's right. And the sad thing about it, it's not going to be the way of a lot of church people. Y'all do know that we never supposed to be in court two Christians, one against the other. But if somebody go out there and key your car, the next thing you're going to do is, is, is file a police report on it. Yeah. A pentecost. Yes. So we've got to be different. And, and the reason that we could be different is because it, it costs something for our sin to be, be forgiven. Uh, so this is what Jesus, this is what this sudden does. Forgiving one another. And again, this, this, this lesson is centered around church discipline. If we don't have no discipline in the church, people just act any type of way. And this is what Jesus is teaching. Uh, verse 23, Therefore, if the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servant. Notice what I was just telling you now. I was telling you these lessons, if you try to teach them to the world, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. Telling you to forgive somebody that have done you wrong. They, 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 that's just not the way of the world. But notice what he said in verse 23. Therefore, it is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain man. This is a parable dealing with Christians living according to what Jesus said here, the kingdom of heaven. Now, when you start talking about uh, the kingdom of heaven, now, and I'm telling you, these lessons is centered around us being Christian. And I just gave you a scripture where it said God told us to forgive one another. I mean, uh, forgive us of our debt as we forgive our debtor. This is not the way of the world, so this is the way of what? The kingdom. We are kingdom building. This is the way of kingdom. Now when he's talking about therefore is the kingdom of heaven like unto a certain king. Now when we talk about the kingdom of heaven, right? So let's run over to uh, Matthew chapter 24. Um, it might be around about 6 and 8. No, Matthew 6 and 10. Let's see what Matthew 6 and 10 talking about the kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We can't do stuff down, if we're going to just do it like it is, he wants to do things down here on earth as it is in heaven. That's kingdom building down here on earth. Now on earth, nobody's not going to, to, to accept you a key in their car or talking bad about you. You're not going to be willing to forgive them like the script Jesus tells us forgive us of our debts and we forgive our debts because just because of that anytime you go mess up with God God's going to forgive all of those other things. So when he's talking about therefore for the kingdom of heaven this is a parable that he's talking about and this is what we, are, we pray in that prayer thy kingdom come Lord that thy will be done it's no longer about me and my feelings being hurt because of what you've done to me. That, my, that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're going to have to make some effort to do this. This is a great lesson about forgiveness. And the world is not going to do this. And you know what? The world is not going to do it. And a lot of us in the church won't do it. But I'm going to tell you what. We're going to have to stand before Jesus and give an account. And I'd rather stand before him and give an account of my good deed rather than giving account of my bad deed. And let me say this about this particular scripture here about uh, therefore is the kingdom of heaven like unto this certain king. Now, we are commanded to forgive one another as we want God to forgive us. Now, since he's talking to those that God has selected to be part of the church, now, now don't, don't, don't use this the wrong way. If you don't forgive your brothers in Christ, that will not keep you out of heaven. 
But you know what it would do? When you get to heaven, you'll suffer a loss. Now, if God call you and cry and die for you, because what God does, Satan cannot go out and stop. But you can lose. When you get to heaven, it said that you could suffer losses. Who wants to suffer a loss? Go ahead and do what you need to do down here. And another thing, a lot of people don't realize this. Whenever you mess up down here on this earth, before you get to heaven, you got to pay that debt out down here. Yeah. A lot of things happen to us down here because we paying a debt out. And it's better to pay the debt out down here than stand before God and tell him to depart from me because I know you're not. And it's hard to do these things. And that's why come Christ say, uh, 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 the first thing you have to do is to follow, you got to deny your sin. And this lesson here telling us forgiving one another because some, and some people will take advantage of this. That's right. Some people think you're weak and, and the devil will use them. Yes, but a good, strong Christian will like, be an example for somebody else. That's right. This is not no easy lesson. It might look like easy. It might look like it's simple. But this is going to take a real man or a real woman to learn how to forgive one another. Get on down here because I'm doing kingdom building and I want my life to be an example. Somebody younger coming behind me, seeing how I handle this situation, instead of going off. What them youngsters say? Somebody trying to punk me out? Yes, sir. That's worldly talk. That's we don't need that kind of talking God's out. You got to learn how to humble yourself Amen. and do this thing right. And it's not no easy thing to do in that 23rd verse. It said, uh, like I said, it, it's dealing with kingdom building down here on earth. And even people that don't go to church, they'll tell you in a minute, no, no, when somebody do me wrong, it's going to be an eye for an eye. It's going to be a two for a two. Yes. And they don't even understand when God said an eye for an eye and a two for a two. God is not telling you if somebody knock your eye out to go and knock their eye out. That it never was meant for that. What he was saying, an eye for an eye and a two for a two. If you don't want nobody knocking your eye, don't you knock somebody else's eye. You don't want nobody knocking your tooth out, don't knock anyone else's tooth out. Because if they knock your eye out and then you go knock their eye out, you're going against what God said. If God said it, and that's called what? Vengeance, right? Yes, it is. But what did God say, vengeance? Vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Let the Lord handle that. But it's too many times we want to handle it. And that's the way of the world. Eye for an eye. And a two for a two. If we live like that, we'll destroy the whole human race. So we got to get it right. But, but people that does not know the Lord, they'll jump up in a minute. Oh, no. Eye for an eye. Two for a two. Not having no understanding what God meant. So, uh, uh, my brother, my sister, this is uh, a, a good lesson. Uh, and, and another thing, <laughs> and I just said that, and I just said I don't want nobody to misunderstand that, because when I was saying that some of these things you could do, and when you get to heaven, uh, you can suffer loss. Now, if you take advantage of these things, doing this and thinking about, well, I'm going to get to heaven anyway. Yeah, uh, I, I got some news for you. It, it's two thrones that we're going to have to stand before. Jesus uh, and God. Thank you. And we stand before Jesus. Now, I, all of us got to stand before Jesus. Yes. So I'm going to go to the left and some going to go to the right. Some is going to get there and suffer loss. Now, if you go to Jesus' seat, that's one thing. But there's another seat. That great white throne. Yes. And if you got to go through that, you're going before God. Yes. So we don't want to take no chances around here thinking that I can get away with it and I'm going to get to heaven anyway. It's not to be played with like this. Verse 24. And when he had begun reckoning, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 Tell and keep in mind now, this is not Jesus is giving an example about what's going on here. Uh, and, and did this really happen? It's a parable that Jesus is giving. And in this 24 verse, a talent uh, actually, he's talking about money. And a talent, when you get to discovering, it, it, it equal to dineros. Uh, and a dinero equal to 
one day's pay. And, and he's talking about 10,000 talent. And, and if he got 10,000 talent and a talent equal to a denaro, which equal to a one day's pay, this debt that Jesus is talking about here in verse 24, uh, uh, the 10,000 talent, this man have ran up something that he can, really cannot pay off. His debt is too big to be paid off. Now keep in mind, this is a parable. What is Jesus really talking about here? Sin. Can sin be paid off? No. But it was paid off. Because of blood. Of the blood. But but the man himself, this is what Jesus, you, you gotta you, you gotta look at this thing from a spiritual side too. Keep in mind it's a parable. And then look what he said here. But for as much as he had not to pay, he, he didn't have enough money to pay this debt out. And when you put these numbers together, you will you come to find out, uh, uh, if you want to do the math on it, which I'm not going to go through all that today, but but it come out to end up being 60,000 uh, 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 talent. And if you do, for 365 days, one time, it'll take you 165 years to pay this out. If you're going to work to pay it out. So in other words, this man had got himself into something that he could not get himself. He could never pay it out. He could never pay it out. He could not pay it out in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Same thing he's trying to tell you. You can't pay sin out. Yeah. Now we're going to find out in the next verse. Uh, 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 but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold. He couldn't pay it off, so he had, he had to be sold. Not only him, his wife, his children, and all that he had. That, that's all he had. It was going to take everything this man had to try to pay this bill off. All that he had. Everything he had. And, and a payment, yeah. To be made. In other words, this is what it would have taken to clear his debt off. Mm -hmm. So the man could not clear his debt off. Yeah. So thank God that our debt can be cleared, our debt can be paid off. And this is why we got to, this is what he's trying to tell us. These little things here, you better go ahead on and do like I was telling you. Forgive your brother. Because if you do not forgive your brother and God going to charge you with every sin that you do, you forgive me of my debt. If you forgive my debt, you can't pay your debts off. Yeah. But the only way you can pay your debts off in this lesson is forgiving your brother. Yes, it is. And I hope we see what I'm seeing in this. Because if you refuse to do what Jesus tells you, this stuff is going to build up to you. And it, it was going to cost this man his wife, his children, and everything that he had for the payment to be made. And, and, and the bottom line is, he could not pay it off in a lifetime. What is God telling us? You can't pay your sins off. I don't care how long you, I don't care how much good you think you're doing. He going to say, ain't nobody good but the Father. And the only way you can get this thing paid off is you got to forgive Others, as you want God to forgive you. That's, we were in 25, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was going to cost the man all, him and all his family, everything he owned, enough to pay his debt off. And he's still going to be in debt. Now, before I go any further, l let me share something with you that have infiltrated our churches. And I see it a lot when we're talking about forgiving somebody now. You, you got to forgive people when they do you wrong. According to this list, you got to learn how to forgive people. You, you know, one thing that I see that's hurting our churches real bad right now, and hurting our children, divorces. When people get a divorce now, they hating each other. And you know who that who, who suffer the most when, when thank you. You messing up a generation of children. 
because the mama and the daddy have gotten divorced and they can't forgive one another of whatever cause they divorced. They just can't go on in their life. Getting along. And that's what he's saying. Forgiving, getting along, living the way God tells you. Because I tell you about the, uh, the fruit of the flesh, uh, which is hatred, wrath, strife, envy, murdering. And even if you're going to get it, you're going to still have to love, peace, joy, gentleness. You got to show that to that other person. And then they said, we're living in a time now where, it, and it's sad now, uh, because another thing happened. When you go to get divorced, this is all part of this lesson. Uh, Y'all might think I'm out in La La Land, but I'm not. I'm talking about things that are hurting in the church now. A man walk off from his wife, and he got a daughter, and then when his daughter gets a certain age, he done remarried, sexual assault or sexual advances. And, and then he get back to the dead and all this hatred build up in him. You got to get it out. Yeah. Because another thing I tell, and I run into this all the time when people come up to me talking about something that happened because of their divorce. You should have thought about that when you got the divorce. Yeah, yeah. When you get a divorce, you're not walk, just walking out on your wife. Yeah, if you got children, you're walking out on those children too. And you're going to put your daughter under the roof with another man. And, and now that used to be the sad thing, but now your boy is under the roof with another man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now they got eyes on your, on your son. Yes, they do. Because this is the kind of world that we're living in because we don't stray so far away from, from God. Mm -hmm. And then this thing called hate crime. But you hate another race of people. Man, we dealt with that in that, you, in that convention I went to, to this week. How we, we have other people land, moving in these neighborhoods now. Yeah. All black neighborhoods. And it's easy to start hating them. Because they come in here with their culture, they come in here with their way. We, we start hating on them. But hatred is not in God's will. Right. So I just wanted to throw that in. Because if we're doing that too, we got to clean this mess up. Because we're going to have to give an account to God. We got to learn how to deal with those fruit of the spirit rather than those uh, uh, things of the flesh. Uh, now, he, I think we was at 25, 26. The servant therefore fell down. Now, this is, this is the man that went to Jesus. I mean, to the, he said a certain king. Now, in this Bible, I mean, in our lesson in verse 23, it's talking about the kingdom of heaven, right? And it's, it's actually talking about the king. Now, when they talk about a certain king, just to know who that king is, that's God. That's symbolic of God. And we, we back up to verse 23. A certain king is God, the one that forgive us of our wrongdoing as we forgive others. Now we get back down here to verse 26. The servant therefore fell down and worshiped him. Who do we worship? So you, you, I hope we can see what, what Jesus is going with this. He was trying to get them to see this thing for what is really concerning forgiveness. This is coming from God. So he said, the servant therefore fell down and worshiped him. We don't worship no other human. That's right. Yeah. So this is all focusing on God the Father. Yeah. Fell down and worshiped him saying, Lord, Lord, we talking about God. Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Verse 26. Uh, this, this is a parable dealing with, with us as servants of the king, the one who forgave us. And here we find this man is falling down, worshiping him. Uh, it wasn't too, it wasn't a, a few years ago, uh, Deacon Webster, you know about it. Uh, we used to come up to the altar and do what? But I want something else. But he actually said, we used to come to the altar doing prayer service, and everybody could would do what? Get down on their knees. Get down on their knees. We stopped doing that. And another thing, when we were children and we were taught coming up, when we went to bed at night, we, we were told to do what? But we used to have to get down on our knees before we got in the bed. We had to get on our knees 
and say our prayer. And this is what he's talking about. Kneel and worship him. Uh, when he said the servant fell down. Man, we, we, we've strayed so far, we, we don't even want to go on our knees no more to God. And you know what they say, the best way up is what? Going down first. Yeah, yeah. Some of these sins have a lot of men doing. The best way up is to go down on your knees. Sending prayers up to we, we We really have strayed away. And we've strayed so far away. So, I don't think we ever go back. The pastor stood there at the rabbit, he said, time is not made with no reverse gearing. Some of the things that we don't do anymore, we're not going to go back and do. Uh, uh, the man fell down and wished he was saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. So this is him pleading. This is him wishing. My brother, let me tell you when we come in here on, uh, on Sunday morning, we need to learn why we're coming in here. We are coming in here to worship God. And we ought to come in here to humble, getting out on the, you got to humble yourself down. You're not to come in here and focus on anything else in this building that's drawing your attention away from praising, worshiping God. If God woke you up with a roof over your head, and if you got something to eat in that cup, and most of us go to the closet, we got to choose on what we're going to wear. And I'm not just talking about suits and clothes, shoes and everything else. We got so much to be thankful for, but we can come right in here and let's get distracted by something else. And he's telling us right here, you need to fall down before God to worship him. And we also got to learn how to worship God in spirit and in truth. Not going through no motion. Not because this is just what we do. We're so used to doing this on Sunday. It's going to become routine. We better get away from this and get back right. Now, I went to a funeral Saturday. Uh, one of my homeboys died. They had his funeral here in Houston. And I saw a lot of guys from St. Augustine, and, and I, one of them was a, the brother of my classmate. And I was asking him, man, I haven't seen Johnny since I left St. Augustine. He said, man, Johnny dead. I said, what? He said, Johnny, the coronavirus took Johnny out. There's so many got taken out with that coronavirus. And if we still here, man, we ought to be so thankful. And we, you know, we have really forgotten how it was in 2000 when you couldn't even come to church. Not only you couldn't even go to the supermarket, you couldn't go nowhere. And you couldn't even, get, if you was having a heart attack, you couldn't even get in the hospital because it was full of COVID people. And I don't know if y'all remember, they had these, these what them thing they have on the railroad track? Refrigerated uh, cars. Carts. Just lying up with dead people in them. Yes, they do. Refrigerated trucks. Yeah. We we had like we have forgotten. It ain't been that long ago. But but my brother, my sister, this is this is a parable, and it's also telling us we need to know how to worship God. Fall down on our knees and worship him. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Then let's go on to verse 27. Now, would you turn the clock around, please? It said, then... It's off this list. It's working on the temple It said, then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion. What was it that moved God? It's the way this man presented himself to God. Thank you, Deacon Brother Superintendent. That's what he did. He humbled himself. He got out on his knees. Saying, Lord, have patience with me. So he went to God, praying to God, knowing that he was in need for God. And that's what I'm telling you. We, we, we come now like we're doing God a favor by coming. And a lot of people think, yeah, I got up and went to church and that's it. Man, we got so many reasons to be thankful. To still be here in the land of the living after what we just experienced. Now it's so violent and everything else. Uh, just Something popped up on my phone the other day. The man was out mowing his yard. And somebody just drove by and killed him. Didn't rob him or nothing. Just shot him down. They don't even know why. Just but you know a lot of these games, if you want to get in a game, you got to go out and kill somebody. Yeah. This is the world we're living in now. 
Verse 27. Then the Lord of the servant was, was moved with compassion. And let's keep in mind this. We just come out of a lesson not too many weeks ago where the rich man had no compassion. Yeah. For the better. But then the Lord of the servant moved with compassion. And this act of forgiving is an act of also compassion. And loose him and forgave him the debt. So this is what the Lord did for this man. Had compassion on him. Loosened him and forgave him of the debt. This is dealing with the sovereign God that we serve. God was moved because of this man's compassion. I mean, his humbleness. When he came to wish him. Uh, and when we come to wish him, my brother, my sister, we better get our heart right. If we want compassion from God. If we want forgiveness from God. If we want our sin removed. We're going to have to go to God and get this thing right. And also, it's dealing with God's mercy. And we ought to thank God for his mercy because when we get ourselves in these situations, we can't pay God <coughs> for our wrongdoing. You remember what Brother East used to say? I can't pay you, Lord. But I can show do what? Thank you. Thank you, sir. And that's the kind of, this is what Jesus is all about in this lesson. Verse 28, but the same servant, notice what he said, but the same servant, the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants. Now, for him to be talking about fellow servant, that's who we are. We are, all of us are fellow servants of the Lord. We are all in this stuff together. I hope we see this. So he went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, and laid his hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owe it. Yes. Now, Lord have mercy. After God had showed this man compassion, yeah. God showed him compassion. And he's going to go out and get one of his fellow servants, and let me use it, one of his brothers, that owed him a pence. Now, a pence does not come nowhere close to a talent. A hundred pence. A hundred pence could be paid off. Mm -hmm. uh, they said a hundred pence is about three months wages. And then this other man, what he owed, it take a lifetime to pay that out, right? Yeah. He go to God with enough debt that he can't pay it off in a lifetime. And then he go to one of his fellow brothers that owed him a pence. Something can be paid off in three months wages. And when the and before he even gave him an opportunity to respond, he took the man by the throat, then said. He he got his throat first according to these scriptures. God is telling us about our own sin. Now, you might not catch your brother by his throat, but you can catch him by his throat by some of the things that you're saying about him. You you can go talk about him, telling everybody in the church about the little issue. It's the same thing. You're killing him. You're murdering him with your mouth. Another thing, uh, Pastor Taylor was teaching that lesson. He was telling us about that. Yeah, you saved. God saved you. When you saved, you saved. But God got to work on you to get that tongue right. So we have to be mindful of these things. We are not to cut our brothers to death. We got some issue with them. We're not to go down and just, 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 just murder him with our tongue. And this is what this man, he took him by the throat saying, pay me that thou owe it. And his fellow servant, this is one of his brothers, somebody that he knew, fell down at his feet and besought him saying, have patience with me and I will pay thee off. He went to his, I mean, his, his fellow brother came to him, fell down just like he fell down. And asked him the same thing that he asked the Lord for. Have patience with me. 
The Lord had compassion, but look at what did he have? None. No compassion. And if we're not careful, we will find ourselves being just like this man. Yeah. And even for our sin that we do, when God forgives them, he's showing compassion to us every day of our life. And then we'll get up there and sing that song so loud. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Singing a lot. And this man wasn't, didn't want to be anything like the Lord who had showed compassion for him. First thing he did was catch this man by his throat. And then after his fellow servant fell down the same way he did, at his feet, and besought him. And that word besought him can also be interpreted just like he begged him, saying, have mercy with me, and I will pay thee off. Now, three months, he could have paid this man off. And the next verse said, and he would what? Not. But went and cast him into prison till he should pay his debt. The same servant who found one of his fellow servants mm -hmm. who owed him would amount to about three months' pay. Forgot. He forgot how he had just been treated. Yeah. Yeah. Grabbed the man by the throat saying, pay me right now. Same situation in verse 29. Asking him to have patience on me and I will pay thee out. And keep in mind, he could not pay this debt out. But thank God, Jesus told us how we could get our debts paid up. And how is that for forgiving us? And this man would not forgive someone else. It's a lesson in that for all of us. It's a lesson that it ought to get our attention. Do unto others as you have them do unto the you. The golden rule. That's the golden rule. But these things does not mean anything to us when we get caught up into that yeah. situation. Out of the model's prayer. And that's what it said. Lord, forgive me of my debt as I forgive my, debt my debt talk. Right. Now we find out he buried 30 and, and he would not but went and cast him into prison until he should pay the debt. Now, theologically speaking, uh, he said he was going to cast him into prison. Now that's theologically speaking about what's going to happen to us when we don't do it the way the Lord Jesus tell us to do in our model prayer. Uh, we can't, how we treat our brothers is how God is going to treat us. Yeah. We won't forgive. God is not going to forgive us. That's right. We can't forgive them of their debt. God is not going to forgive us of our debt. Holding grudges is not a good feeling. Holding a grudge is not a good feeling. You, you're not in your normal self. You don't even feel good. Your body's not, not right. Because you're holding a grudge. You, you're upset. Your head is all messed up. Because you're holding something that God does not want in you. And we got to learn how to live by what these lessons are teaching in us. And Jesus is given a good example. And many, this thing could hit on any of us. Uh, um, he's talking to the church. He's not talking to the world because the world does not want to hear this. Which one we on? We did 30. 31. So when his fellow servants saw what he was done, or when his fellow servant saw what was done, they were very sorry. And came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Now, my brother, my sister, this, this is a parable. Now he said in here, like I said, this is a parable. We, we better see what the Lord is trying to tell us. 
In other words, he said somebody else came in, in, in verse 31 and, and saw what he had done and, and, and came and told the Lord all that he was doing. And I got this from your mother, Brother Superintendent. Everything that we're doing, just like this man, it was reported, right? Yeah. You, you know what your mama said one time? He's looking. He looking, looking and he's booking. Amen. So all of these things we're doing, it's just like this man. You're not getting away with anything. God is looking and, looking. and God is booking. <laughs> one day, we what, what do we want in the book? That Lamb Book of Life. You know, so man, this is a, I'm telling you, this lesson is a very important lesson because God knows everything that we are doing. This man, I like, he was getting away with something. Remember it said, all this happened with, between him and the Lord. Now he's going off doing all this other stuff like the Lord don't know anything about it. And even though it said his fellow servants saw and went and told it, but keep in mind it's a parable. Mm -hmm. Jesus is trying to speak to this in an earthly way where we can understand it. But I'm going back to what Mama Weffer said. He's looking, looking and he's booking. He sees everything. And when we can't forgive one another and tearing one another down, catching them by their throat, and you don't have to physically catch them by their throat, you can do it with your mouth. You can even do it with your attitude. You ain't wondering how to lift all the night then when you come to him and how you shake his hand or how you pass by. It could be felt. That shouldn't be going on in this business that we're in. Because we are on a mission for the Lord. And he's, Jesus is teaching his disciples in this lesson here. Letting them know you cannot be like this. And then what he's going back to tell them Peter when Peter wants to know how many times. Peter, there's no limit on how many times. You just forgive him. Don't be counting. If you get up to 490, go past that if you count. 31. No, 32. Uh, then the Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant. Notice what he, how he's addressing these people here. Servant. When we stand before God, what do we want to hear him say? Well done, my what? So these servants is talking about we that are working for the Lord. This is, who the, yeah. this is not for the world. The world don't want to hear this kind of teaching. That's true. This is for us. And we can fall into this same category if we can't see between the lines. It's a parable. Then the Lord, after that he called him, said unto him, O oh, thou wicked servant. He didn't say that good, nor that favor. And I'm telling you all the time, God could have left the good out. Yeah. <laughs> because even when he said favor, he said, you've been faithful over how many things? Yeah. Just a few things. But this man, he called him a wicked servant. Now, if you're a wicked servant, you're not going to get in. And remember what I would tell you, a lot of us are going to get in, but some of our works are going to be burned. But if it's wicked involved with it, you're going to have to go before that great white throne of God. Yeah. It's sheep and goat, right? I mean, sheep and the goat meant the wheat and the tad right here with them. And, and we better get these lessons right, my brothers and my sisters. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee of not some of your debts. Oh. I forgave you of all of your debts. Why? Because you desired that of me. Now here you are, dealing one of your fellow servants, and he designed the same thing out of you. And look how you treat him. You can't forgive him. Not only that, you're going to choke the man. Not only that, when the man in have you're going to throw him in prison. You're not even giving him the three months to work the dead off. God telling us, y'all better check your own self up and find out that you fall into this category. Because I don't care what you did for Christ, Christ forgave you. Even when he walked the earth, when they talked about it, when they denied it, he still was in the forgiving business. And even though they messed up, man, he didn't, he, he, he didn't kick none of them out. He was willing to train them, keep on teaching them, 
But if I, one day I'm going to have to leave y'all. I got to go back home. So when they messed up, he didn't let that bother him so bad that he wanted to choke them. <laughs> he wanted to teach them as long as the Lord would let him deal with them for those three years, or three and a half years. Uh, then the Lord, after that, he had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee of all thy debt because thou desired it. Should it not thou also have compassion on thy... Keep in mind now, this fellow servant, it could be the same sin of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Even if I had pity on thee. What do you mean pity? We, we know what mercy is, right? Yeah. Mercy is saying God having pity on us. Compassion. Now if God having pity on us, and we want to be Christ like we want to learn how to do what? Yeah. Have pity on somebody else. Compassion. Yeah. Because this same thing, God said, if you can't have show no pity, I'm not going to show you no pity. And man, the, the church is getting just like the world now. Man, I found some stuff out, man. I remember sitting up with, man, I go to the ministers' class, uh, Brother Trout. Man, some of these ministers say, people are running people out of the church. Some of these come and say, he, he was saying, after this coronavirus, a, a different group of people come to, to his church. People that had never been in church. People didn't know how to act in church. Bringing some children in, in church, and they were just, it's something new about it. He said they were walking through the front door, and he had people in the church running them out through the back door. Because they didn't like some of the things that they were doing in church. And Jesus didn't run these men out. He wanted, if you're going to give me three years to train these men, I want, and when the three years was up, Jesus wanted more time. He really wanted some more time with those two apostles. But he was on a schedule. He said, I need some more time because I think that they're going to have a problem with giving in to temptation. And the only thing he said, now I got to go. I don't want to, but I got to go because my time is up. But I'm not going to leave you alone. Yes. I'm going to send you somebody else, which is a comforter. Yes, yes. It's going to help you in these situations. We don't want to give people enough time to learn nothing. Because this is the way it used to be. Yeah, the way it used to be. Things don't work the way they used to work. Thirty-four, and, and, and his Lord was wrought. In other words, angry. And delivered him to the torment. Till he should pay all that was due unto him. Now we do know who the tormentor is. Satan. That's Satan. This man is going to get delivered to the tormentor. Why? Because of his own action. Because when he came to the Lord and the Lord showed him how compassion, the Lord showed him mercy, the Lord showed him pity. And then when he had an opportunity to do something that he had been shown Talk and it happened to him. He went back to his worldly ways. My brother, my sister, we can't deal with brothers and sisters the way you deal with them in the world. He wouldn't forgive. That's the bottom line right there. This is what our lesson is about. Forgive. Not forgiving. And because of that, the law was wrong, angry, and delivered him to the torment. Till he should pay all that was due unto him. Now, if we're going to get theologically speaking, if he's going to pay all due with him, that meant that the bottom line theologically, he's going to spend eternity where? Hell. In hell being tormented. Because of his action. So likewise, shall my heavenly father, you see, you see right there, I will tell y'all all the time, he's talking about God. So he makes it clear in the 35th verse. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. If ye from your heart forgive not every one of his brothers. This is brothers and sisters in Christ of their trespasses. 
It didn't say that they got to give forgive you, but you got to forgive them. Because every tub got to sit on its own bow. This is a great lesson, my brother and my sister. The principle for living a godly life, an important lesson has been displayed before us tonight. And it was dealing with the principle of forgiveness. One of the most rewarding things, because like I'm telling you, uh, uh, Brother Travis, you can't walk around here hating somebody. It's, if you, and let me tell you, if two people, in, if, if you hated somebody in this church, don't you know somebody recognized that? So somebody knows you can't stand to be around them. So somebody see you meeting them in one eye, you're going to go down another one. Because there's something in your heart is not right. And if you don't get it out, what you think the other people don't see it. And, now, and, and let me tell you, don't worry about so much about the other people not seeing it. You better worry about because this lesson is telling us. Yeah. Yes, sir. There's no way around that you have to forgive one another. And how are you to forgive them? You forgive them as God has forgiven you. Now, if they don't forgive you, that's going to be between them and God. But you got to make sure you forgive one another. And like I'm saying, your life is on display. And not only that, don't you think that this young generation that's coming up behind them, if two people don't get along in the church and can't stand each other, you don't think they don't see it? You can't hide that kind of garbage. So what do they ought to be seeing? They ought to be seeing love. They ought to be seeing compassion. They ought to be seeing us on one accord. They ought to be seeing us coming together here, here, falling on these, worshiping God in spirit and in truth. But not sitting around here with you watching somebody else all over the track. Like you know, FBI agent. Come in here to worship God in spirit and in truth. It is also one of the most difficult for many people to put this into practice. Forgiving somebody and loving them with a pure heart. Showing compassion. Maybe because of the world we live in, do we live in now? You know what kind of world we live in now? Have it your way. It's my way. It's my way or no way. That's one of the biggest lies I've ever been told. If you're going to do this, you're going to have to do it his way. Because before Jesus, right before he got ready to leave here, he let his disciples know something. I'm getting, I, I, look, I don't want y'all to uh, let your heart be troubled. I got to get out of here. It's time for me to go back to my father's house. And I want to let y'all know something about my father. There are many mansions yeah. in my father's house. There's one for every one of you. Yeah. But he said, if you want to get up there, I am the what? Wait, wait. And you got to do it my way. You can't do it no more your way. Yeah. It has to be my way. And that's the truth. And I am the life. You got to live the same life that I live. And I don't care who it was, Jesus was able to forgive whosoever needed forgiveness. But we think, man, no, he's so bad. No, he done went too far. Keep on thinking like that. Because of this world that we are living in when the philosophy is have it your way. Because this is the world we now live in. Well, I got some news for you. One day this world won't exist no more. He's going to get rid of this world. It's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Why a new heaven and a new earth? Because it was a battle fought in the first heaven. And this world ain't nothing but a mess down here. So I'm just going to clean it up. Anybody ever bought a brand new car? Man, it's nothing like a brand new, banking new car. It even smells good. God said, I got a new heaven and a new earth for you. I want to see this. I want to be part of it. We got to learn how to get these things that he's teaching us. And this is, like I was saying, this is one of the most difficult things that we find to do is learn how to forgive someone that have done us wrong. And the thing about this is little nitpicking minor stuff. 
and people see this. Never come a lot of people don't have anything to do with the church. Again, in my closing, I want you to know that this is about church discipline. And another thing about it is in the prayer that, that Jesus told us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, please, Lord, forgive us of our debts, which is his sin, and we forgive our debt talks. And if we can't forgive our debt talks, we actually telling God in that master prayer, Lord, don't forgive me. Amen. Let us bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Father God, we come tonight thanking you for this lesson. As some of the theologians said, it, it, it's a difficult lesson. But because of our human nature, but because we born in a way that is not the way of the world to forgive those that trespass against us. But this is the teaching of the master teacher, telling us that we got to forgive one another. And, and Lord, I declare if we ever experienced that, if we ever find out that we had a situation like that, but we had something against one of our brothers and sisters in Christ. How that bill up inside of us is not a good fit. But Lord, we could go to him and straighten that thing out, how much so much better we feel. We need your help, Lord, to help to shape and mold the church to do your will, to have compassion one for the another, to show pity one for the another. Because we know that with compassion, Pity is nothing but your mercy. And then, Lord, we thank you for your grace yes. and that unmerited favor because we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And surely, Lord, we need you to forgive us of our wrongdoing and help us, Lord. Program us, Lord. Teach us, Lord, how to forgive one for another. Help us to be mindful that we have a generation of people, me, myself, Lord, I'm on the generation that's headed out of here. Help me be a good example yes, yes. for that young generation yes. that's coming behind me. And if an opportunity to come, I can teach them to love their enemies, and do good for them that despite them, use them. Father God, it's my prayer that you will use me in thy service we can shape and mold the next generation mm -hmm. to be a generation that I will be well pleased with. And you will continue to show mercy on this great nation, America. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' precious name, this is our prayer. Amen, Amen and we thank you.